Over the past four decades, Star Wars has spawned plenty of movies, animated shows, and video games, but live-action television has always been the one unconquered frontier in the Star Wars universe, at least until now. At Star Wars Celebration 2019, showrunner and creator Jon Favreau repeatedly emphasized that The Mandalorian will be one giant love letter to the original Star Wars trilogy, and that tribute extends behind the scenes as well. Favreau wants to make sure The Mandalorian feels like our first visit to that galaxy far, far away. Naturally, green screens and CGI are necessary to deliver The Mandalorian on a TV budget, but Favreau says that the crew is also using puppets, animatronics, and special effects makeup wherever possible. For example, while the dogfights in the modern Star Wars films are mostly computer-generated, Favreau really wanted to make a model of the Razor Crest to use during production. Well, Industrial Light & Magic's art staff were so excited about the idea that they didn't just make a model, unprompted, they went home and built a camera rig in their garages, recreating the hardware that was used to make Star Wars back in 1977. The end result looks just like classic Star Wars films. You'll see this is, this is done. Isn't that cool? It already feels like Luke's X-Wing, right? ILM's staff aren't the only Star Wars fans who got in on the Mandalorian action, either. The show's producers reached out to the 501st Legion, a group of Star Wars fans who make their own highly detailed Stormtrooper outfits. Lucasfilm has teamed up with the 501st before for promotional events, but The Mandalorian marks the first time that the 501st has appeared on screen in an official Star Wars production. All of Star Wars owes a huge debt to George Lucas. After all, he created the thing. But The Mandalorian has some specific ties to Star Wars Maker. For one, the show is heavily inspired by the first Star Wars movie, especially the opening act and the cantina scene. However, as Giancarlo Esposito has revealed, Lucas's input on the series goes a lot deeper than that. According to Esposito, Lucas actually contributed some creative ideas to the show. While discussing The Mandalorian with Collider, Esposito said that Jon Favreau, quote, figured it out with George Lucas himself and worked directly with him to make sure the show felt like classic Star Wars. Star Wars and video games have always enjoyed a healthy relationship, and The Mandalorian pushes it to the next level. While Jon Favreau and his team used practical effects as much as they could to capture the original Star Wars handmade charm, digital wizardry was key in bringing The Mandalorian's exotic worlds to life. But how did Favreau and the actors know what their fictional locations were supposed to look like? By using a game engine, of course. Video game software is great at rendering detailed 3D environments in real time, and the Mandalorian team used that tech to create digital sets that the cast and crew could film and see the results in real time. Not only did that speed up production, but it let the Mandalorian's creative minds get an excellent read on what the finished product would look like and adjust accordingly. The results should speak for themselves. Thanks to Boba Fett, we knew what a Mandalorian looked like decades before we knew anything about them as a people, and the Mandalorian wouldn't be the same without him. Boba Fett debuted during the Star Wars Holiday Special, and while the rest of the program isn't worth your time, Nelvana Studios' animated short The Faithful Wookiee absolutely is. Not only does the sequence make Fett cooler than the movies ever did, but the design ended up influencing both how the Mandalorians looked on the Clone Wars. It also set the standard for the Mandalorian's costume. That narrow visor, the big ol' holster, the natural color scheme, and the visible battle damage, those are all from his old short. It also gives an idea as to what the Mandalorian might look like. In fact, Nelvana's animators looked to westerns when storyboarding the short. The faithful Wookiees, surreal landscapes, and the dinosaur that Boba rides might be a little too fanciful for live-action TV, but if you want to see Star Wars reimagined as a spaghetti western, you don't have to wait for The Mandalorian's premiere. There's already an example out in the wild. If you're worried that creator Jon Favreau isn't up to the task of bringing Star Wars to the small screen, don't be. He's got some help. Longtime Lucasfilm president Kathleen Kennedy is listed as one of the show's producers, and all of the material will still go through Lucasfilm's story group, the organization in charge of keeping Star Wars canon consistent. Favreau's also getting a big, big hand from the animated side of things. Dave Filoni may not be a household name, but if you're a modern-day Star Wars fan, you know his work. 
Filoni directed the Clone Wars feature film, and he worked side-by-side -side with George Lucas to bring the subsequent animated series to the air. Filoni also co-created both Rebels and the newest Star Wars cartoon, Resistance. In other words, he's the guy behind a lot of the best parts of modern Star Wars canon. According to The Art of Star Wars – The Clone Wars, Filoni is the brains behind Anakin Skywalker's beloved apprentice, Ahsoka Tano. On Rebels, Filoni and his staff raised questions about the Jedi's relationship with the Force years before Ryan Johnson and The Last Jedi did the same. Revenge is not the Jedi way. I am no Jedi. Heck, he even voiced Chopper, Rebels' scene-stealing droid. Filoni is serving as one of the show's executive producers, and he'll make his live-action directing debut by helming The Mandalorian's very first episode. The Mandalorian takes place about five years after Return of the Jedi and 25 years before The Force Awakens, making the galaxy a very different place than what you're used to. The ragtag Rebel Alliance has transformed itself into the New Republic, a representative democracy that spans many known planets. The Galactic Empire, on the other hand, hasn't been as fortunate. After the Battle of Jakku brought the Galactic Civil War to a close, what remained of the main Imperial fleet retreated to the mysterious Unknown Regions, where it will eventually reform into the First Order. Not yet, though. The First Order is still years away. It's a time of transition. Out on the Outer Rim, where the Mandalorian takes place, former Imperial warlords are scrambling to hold on to power. Former rebels are trying to figure out where they belong now that the fighting has stopped. Criminals try to profit off the confusion, and the Mandalorian's main characters are all caught right in the middle of it. The Mandalorian isn't even out yet, and it's already a hit. Or at the very least, Disney seems extremely confident that it'll be one. Months before The Mandalorian debuted, Jon Favreau got the green light to start writing Season 2. By the time the cast and crew started making the rounds to promote the first season, filming on the second was already underway. Season 2 adds a couple of new directors to its already stacked lineup. For one, Favreau will actually get to helm an episode or two of the series this time around. During Season 1, he was too busy on Disney's The Lion King to take a direct role behind the camera. The Mandalorian cast member Carl Weathers will also direct a Season 2 installment. In fact, his interest in sitting in the director's chair was one of the main reasons why he joined the series. Dreams are worth fighting for. Now, are you going to be a fighter? Or are you going to be a doctor? You're right, Carl Weathers. Favreau promises that there are plenty of surprises, and a few old Legends characters, in the pipeline. Don't give up on The Mandalorian when Season 1 ends in December. The show is just getting started. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite shows are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.